Hi there, my name's Elliot Leon and I'm a filmmaker and musician from the northwest of England, North Lancashire, uh, UK. I'd just like to say thank you, Anna, for giving us this platform to share our thoughts, feelings, opinions on um, this uh, saga that's unfolding and has been since the pretty much the new year. I've really um, been heartened by the videos um, of all, the, all of you out there who have sent in uh, your thoughts and feelings to Anna. Um, it's because it does feel very lonely. Um, it seems sadly that the people that I can relate to the most are all spread out, all of you who I've watched on, on Anna's channel, including obviously first and foremost Anna, but um, I can relate to you all and it's sad that you're all spread out around the country because certainly where I live, my neighbours, um, they're, you, you know, I can't talk to them about what I'm going to say here because they just close me down. They, I can't get halfway through a sentence before they just, you know, roll their eyes or they look already, they start their tone of voice and their expressions change, ne you know, into something negative. Um, and they're just going along with the status quo. Um, so I just wanted to share a few brief thoughts and feelings about the situation. Um, like a lot of people, I felt early on, sort of February time, that that something was happening that I was I thought was an exaggeration, and I thought was probably going to be used ultimately to sort of control us. Um, and I, I just thought fairly quickly on, early on, I thought, well, people have been sort of diagnosed with COVID-19, including celebrities such as Idris Elba and Tom Hanks, to name a couple, and their wives. Um, and they sort of said they had mild symptoms. There were elderly people that sort of had been on holiday um, around Christmas and early New Year that came back and had to go into quarantine, but they all made full recoveries. And I sort of thought to myself, well, th these people, there's a lot of middle-aged and older people and they're recovering. And um, when we did go into lockdown, I just noticed and I said, you know, to my family, I said, um, I think that the death rate is just going to go up exponentially once we go into lockdown. And within days, the death rate was going up exponentially. And I couldn't work out why the people that had had COVID-19 in December, January, February, and, and most of March hadn't, you know, most of them had made full recoveries. And it seemed that when we went into lockdown, that's when people were dying exponentially. Um, that didn't make sense to me. Um, I did suspect that they had been um, sort of the, the the way that they were sort of collecting the death figures was inaccurate, and I thought it was probably deliberate to frighten us so that we would go along with it. Um, and um, it seems there's enough evidence out there, which now is getting harder to find because it's getting harder online to find these things. Google is sort of shutting anything down. It seems, I mean, it's there, but you, you know, now instead of typing in a few things about, you know, what is the global death rate of COVID-19, um, you know, the true global death rate, it just comes up with what they predicted in early March, but not what the actual death rate is now, or certainly since June or July. You you know, you've got to really dig to find that. And that, again, I don't know why they would withhold that from people. Obviously, I do know it's because people will, will sort of work out that it's not as bad as is being touted. Um, I'm a filmmaker and, you know, I'm not I, my heart goes out to everyone out there, whatever vocation you're in. Um, as you can imagine, though, I'm sort of not able to make any money at the moment. Um, I'm a musician too, and you can't, for musicians, we can't perform. Filmmakers, you can't do anything unless it's incorporating social distancing, as they are. I, haven't, I don't watch soap operas, but I've heard um, that, or I've read that soap operas are incorporating social distancing into their storylines which is, again, my heart sort of sinks because it's, people are so impressionable, of course, what, what better way than to use a soap opera to sort of further sort of manipulate the, the population, 
you know, by showing social distancing as something that's normal, which it's not. It's it's actually anti-social distancing. Um, so I I was writing a screenplay for a film, uh, sort of from December onwards, December last year, up until lockdown, which was um, to be set in the mid 1920s. Um, which obviously there's no way that I can incorporate social distancing into it, so I can't do that at all until they abolish social distancing and mask wearing. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't want to ramble on too much, but I. I just wanted to say that um, I wonder if other people had had wondered this question about the vaccine. Um, Bill Gates, Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock. Um, I mentioned some of these celebrities, some of these actors that, that said that they tested positive for COVID-19. The people, or certainly, I don't know if Bill Gates has had COVID-19, but certainly the others have had COVID-19. And I wonder, will they take the vaccine? And wh why won't the journalists and uh, news presenters ask them that question when they interview them? Why won't they say, will you yourself take the vaccine to Bill Gates, to Boris Johnson, to Matt Hancock, to all of those people pushing the vaccine on us, the, the masses? Why can't they have something to prove that they've taken the vaccine too? And if they won't take the vaccine, why won't they take it? And why should we be expected to take it? Um, they say they did say early on, as people know, there's all these contradictions, but they did say that those who have had the virus and recovered will probably be immune. And I presume that Professor Neil Ferguson, who broke lockdown to have a physical relationship with a woman from another household who had kids and her husband and this man is privy to information that probably would make our toes curl he still wasn't frightened enough to to abstain from having sex with his uh, mistress so i find that strange um that that isn't a big enough red flag to, to most people that if he wasn't afraid and he didn't follow his own advice why should we um, but again that just gets swept under the carpet um, I've never known a situation where there's so many contradictions um, that people just overlook. And when you say this to people, I've tried to talk to people on the street, they look at you as if you're, you know, I've had people say, I think you're looking too deeply into Elliot, I think you're getting into conspiracy theory territory, and I, I'm just, I have to stand back in amazement that nothing I've said is untrue, nothing I've said is not valid. Um, um, and like I said, I, I just think the people pushing the vaccine, why aren't they put on the spot and just ask, will you take the vaccine? Could someone in the comments section below this video sort of let me know if they have said that and if there's a link to any interviews where they say, yes, we'll take the vaccine and we'll, it will be sort of verified and proven that we've taken the same vaccine that we want you all to take? Because I haven't seen that. Um, but I've tried to speak to people on the street and I haven't found anyone who has allowed me to get a few of these points across. Um, and like I said, I'm just thankful to Anna that you've put all um, us together and allowed us to put our thoughts out, out there. Um, because sadly, none of the people where I live um, are going along, you know, they're going along with the, the mainstream narrative. And without sounding like a snitch, there's another point I wanted to make. I've noticed some of my neighbours from when we were locked down at the end of March were breaking lockdown to have people visit them. Obviously, these are my neighbours, so I recognise the people that I see coming to visit them. And they've had fam family members, friends from other households that, that were visiting them all, all during that period where we were told we weren't allowed to do that. Then... I saw that and I thought, oh great, that means they don't believe it either. They or they certainly don't believe, I'm not saying COVID-19 doesn't exist, but they certainly don't believe that we should have to be locked down. So when I spoke to some of them, they said, oh no, you know, we should be locked down. And I didn't mention that I'd seen them, you know, having people visiting because I thought, you know, I don't want it to look like I'm spying on them. This is, they weren't even hiding it, to be honest. But I, they said, oh no, we should continue the lockdown. And I, I just felt like I knew because I live near these people, it would be awkward. But I wanted to say to them, well, why do you want the lockdown? Because it's, it's not for health reasons, because you've been breaking lockdown with people visiting you and vice versa since the end of March. So what is the reason you want the lockdown? Um, I, and if anyone could answer that question, if they, if you can 
put your own thoughts in the comments section as to why you think so many people are doing that because there's so much traffic outside as well there's so many people going out driving everywhere windows down no mask on which is good because i i don't wear a mask um and it's awkward i hate going shopping but i don't want to wear a mask but i've noticed a lot of people will take the mask off when they come out of the shops they get in their car have the window down they're stuck in traffic you know no mask and they're out a lot people are out a lot if they were really terrified that this was a killer pandemic they would be going out once a week to do shopping and that's it is it because is it because they're being furloughed and it's just easy you know to go along with the government's what they're saying which keeps changing from week to week um, they say to us we're following the science but the science is just all over the place um, and are people just going along with the status quo because they just think well we want to get furloughed and and i'm not saying everybody is do doing it you know to be deceitful and dishonest but certainly the people where i'm like i told you my neighbors clearly they're they're not doing it for health reasons they're, they're, they don't want the lockdown to continue for health reasons because they've been breaking it from day one so it's obviously for other reasons they want the lockdown um but yeah this is that's just a few thoughts i just feel if it was a genuine pandemic and people were really dropping like flies from coronavirus um people would be a very very afraid i mean they are afraid when they sort of run 20 foot away from you but they wouldn't be going out all the time in cars particularly where i am just driving around everywhere you to me that's because they're bored you know and they they're not really afraid but they're going along with the status quo and it, the more that this happens the more we're setting a precedent for the government to keep it's like they're just letting more and more air out of the balloon if if that makes sense they, they're just squeezing more and more um out of us until we just become completely subservient okay so well i just want to say thank you again anna for giving us this opportunity and please everybody you know keep your chin up and uh um, just keep speaking out and talking about all the inconsistencies and the contradictions with this sort of mainstream narrative about COVID-19. Okay, thank you very much everyone. Take care.